No matter how high-tech, highfalutin, lazy, or foo-foo America gets, we will never stop hunting and fishing. This is The Hunting Quest. The Hunting Quest. We take one hour of every week and talk about our favorite things in the world, hunting, hunting and, fishing. and fishing. You'll get tips and help on the fishing environment locally in the DMV area. Plus, we're going to have fun along the way. This is The Hunting Quest. And now your host, Mike Tippin. Still not Bennett, though. And we all know why. It's because I can't hit the record button. That's okay. At least this time we I didn't get to the point where we were actually talking. So I guess that's good. Yeah, I heard the little thing go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was playing the intro and I was like, wait a second. I forgot something. Oh, record <laughs> button. Damn it. <laughs> At least you caught it before it came, became an issue. Yeah. Unlike uh, with Kyle where we talked for like five minutes and I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Take two. Along those same lines, um, we do have a special guest tonight. We do. James! Here, boys. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Cheers to you. Oh, not much. Just sulking that turkey season's over and it's not going to be in for a long time. And it's summertime, so there's nothing to hunt except groundhogs. Yeah, but you could fish. You could go fish. Yeah, I can, but... You know, I, I do get out. I try to get out at least two or three times a month, but I like pulling the trigger. I get it. Fair enough. But, you know, if you pull the trigger all the time, I think you'd be tired of it, wouldn't you? Mm. No. Nah, <laughs> he I said, no. Nah. I, <laughs> I probably would. I'd probably be single. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. probably a good thing that it's like this, yes. <laughs> so, speaking of the wife of, of a turkey hunter, uh, how's she doing? She's doing great. Very glad that turkey season's over. Yeah. I mean, she she tolerates it, but she's glad I'm home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I suspect you had a fairly decent uh, turkey season this year. Yeah, it was a great season. We yeah. got to, you know, had a lot of, a lot of turkeys, got to fool with, and got to hunt a lot. So, you know, the weather was beautiful. So, yeah, it was great. Um, so the last time we talked to you, you were headed to, you're headed out to Florida, and you were yep. going to try to get your your turkey in Florida, and start us from there. How'd you do? Well. My Florida hunt was interesting. I got down there at, I don't know, 6 o'clock on Friday evening just by myself. You know, I, I ended up get I got a hotel room and just kind of rode around that evening uh, looking for turkeys, looking for alligators, looking for <laughs> what are they, freaking anacondas, whatever, whatever the hell those are. Big-ass pythons. Are <laughs> whatever the hell they are. Just looking around, and, you know, I think like a mile from the hotel, I saw my, I laid eyes on my first Osceola, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, he was just strutting in a pasture, and I was just, you know, people are honking at me, and I'm just pretty much in the highway, like, looking through binoculars, you know. And, uh, Been there, done that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt like an idiot, but I was like, hell, I've never seen one before. I want to see the black wings, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I went out the next morning. Um, I hadn't heard anything, hadn't seen anything. And it was like, well, you know, this is typical turkey. When I'm hunting, they're not going to gobble what's new. So I just kind of eased out this. It was like a, a road. I guess a, it'd be a logging road or an old uh, fire break, I'm, whatever. And I just kept noticing there was turkey gobbler tracks in the road. And I could see. I hit one spot where there was a bunch of zigzags where I could see one had been strutting in the road. And I was like, well, I'm just going to deer hunt at least for the next hour and just see, you know, what, what's going on. And um, I sat down, maybe yelped and, you know, clucked a couple times, just whatever, hadn't heard anything. And I'd maybe sat there for 20 minutes, maybe half hour, I don't know. 
and I, I catch moving off my left, and here comes a hen running, like, not, I mean, sprinting <laughs> past me. And she's got probably an eight inch beard. So that was really cool. I was like, that's she cool. comes just running past me, and I'm like, wow, that's the biggest beard on a hen I've ever seen. And not 10 seconds after she went past me, here come a gobbler just running full speed ahead. It was, <laughs> I've never shot a turkey like that. It was like, it was like a buck chasing a doe. I mean, it was insane. And he got, he's running down this road. And I didn't even have my mouth call in my mouth. I had just taken it out for a minute, just kind of looking around. And um, I just went, puck, 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 with my voice. And he just stopped, and I shot him at, like, 25 feet, 30 feet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At, like, nine, I think I shot him at 9.30 in the morning, and I actually made it home by a little after midnight that night. Jesus, man. That's impressive. So, well, I got, I definitely got lucky. I, I mean, I just kind of found some sign, and that was just what I had. I hadn't heard anything. I just figured, well, I'll camp for a little bit and see what happens, and it just, it worked out for me. So now you were, you were on private land, right? Yes, that was private. All right. Um, so first of all, congratulations on getting your ICO. That's that's a, that's a huge one. But that set you up for, the thought of, maybe accomplishing your slam, right? That's what we talked about. Was you possibly, you know, getting your slam if you hit your if you hit your Osceola, right? Yep. All right. So you make it back to Virginia, and you guide as well, right? You're, you're, yes. Who do you guide for? If you if uh, you want to say, you don't have to. No, uh, Fair Game Outfitters in North Carolina. And um, you and I have talked a little bit about them. There, they seem like a really top notch place. Um, I've never hunted with them, but um, everything that I've seen and, and, and online and everything like that, they're good folks, man. They they put you on some big birds there. Yeah, it's a real cool, real cool deal. My buddy Greg runs it, and, you know, it's not like some deal where there's 10 hunters coming in a week. I mean, you know, it's a couple guys a week, and they're all pretty much just repeat after repeat after repeat. I mean, the same guys come every year, so – I'll be honest with you, at first, I was kind of hesitant about guiding turkey hunts just because, you know, I've really, like, springtime is very special to me, and I don't want to hunt with people I don't like, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I 100% get it. <laughs> and 100%. I went down last year, and I was like, we're going to see how this goes, and, like, literally, I felt like I was just, you know, all the guys there already knew each other. I was kind of the new guy coming in, and, you know, I became – good friends with everybody and you know some of the guys that i quote unquote guide to take turkey hunting i mean they're i'm not afraid to say they're better turkey hunters than i am i mean they've been looking <laughs> a lot longer than me so i mean i'm picking up things from them you know here and there i mean i'm all, you're always trying to learn you know yeah that's it so it's just it's been great and we've done really well the last two years so and there's plenty of turkeys that's pretty badass man yeah, that's awesome yeah so now you decide, let's get into it. You, you hunt, you guide a little bit, but uh, you had talked about doing your slam in one season. And uh, how did that go? Well, it went really good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's a success, right? Yeah, it went really good. The uh, I'm trying to think. Well, I didn't guide in – North Carolina the first three days because I wanted to hunt here at home with my brother and sorry Lane but I did straight up shoot one from out from under him on Easter Sunday night. <laughs> oh. I, oh. yeah, he, I think he was two seconds from pulling the trigger and I killed him and you know I kind of felt bad because I think that's maybe four in a row I've shot out from under him so not up with, not up with James. James is, James is a turkey, turkey stealer. If you're, not, if, if you're not my brother, you can shoot. But for some reason, it's like a turkey's coming in, and I'm like, I ain't letting Lane shoot. <laughs> so is he older or younger brother? No, he's younger than He's three years younger than I That's why. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> that's exactly why. 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, I knocked the eastern out, you know, first thing. And, you know, I did some more hunting at home and like North Carolina and stuff. I mean, I had a, as good a season as I've ever had, you know, hunting Easterns. And yeah. I headed, I wasn't sure if I was going to go because I was talking to my wife and I was like, you know, like the Grand Slam's pretty cool, but like, I'm not, I just want to extend my season, you know, above all, I just want to keep hunting. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I can, I can head North, just stay East coast and hunt here. She was like, well, why not just go do it? You said you were going to do it. I know you want to do it. Just go do it. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll do it. So I headed West and it was a lot of driving. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> I definitely lost. Uh, that was the only bummer about the whole thing was the drive time because I was like, man, like I could be hunting and I'm driving. You know, that kind of sucked. But um, I, I went to where I was hunting, going to hunt my Rio. And I'll be honest, I don't know how you guys are with like, you know, on X map scouting. I always say, like, I'm going to map scout, you know, but I just, I pull up on X and I'll just, I get, I just can't, I get bored looking at it. I don't, I don't understand why. Like, once I get somewhere, I could look at satellite and really pick it apart. But when I'm, you know, 1,500 miles away sitting at home, I just, it's like I just see, you know, public land and I'm like, well, I'll just pin that. I'll pin that. I'll pin that. But, like, it's pathetic. I mean, I don't, I always hear guys like, oh, yeah, you know, really scouted hard from home on the maps and i'm like how <laughs> I just, yeah so yeah. i'll tell you you got benny on here that is his world man well I, and see man, i even talking. like i'll go in so like the night before we went me and mikey went you know i was looking at it and i'm you never know where birds are gonna be you can't look at on i don't care who you are you can't look at on x and say, oh, I'm going to go out west next week. I'm going to look at this piece of public land on here, and I'm going to pin exactly where a bird is. But you can pin, you know, points of interest, which has always been my kind of thing. You know, find a field, find a draw, find a, you know, it get a little bit of layout of the land in your head, um, which is kind of what I did before Mikey and I went out, just kind of key points of, like, hey, I don't know what's down here, but it looks kind of cool. Let's go check this place out. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. But, it's, you but know, there's no way of saying, oh, I know there's going to be a bird roost in this tree right here mm -hmm. just by looking at topology on a map. However, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> we got to that pin that I was like, yeah, you know, this place looks pretty good. We get down there that morning. We're standing up on a ridge, and there was a bird goblin. He had to be within 50 yards of that pin. If we'd have sat on that pin, we'd have killed that bird. Well, damn. But I'm just going to start sending you pins where I'm hunting and be like, hey, you put that up. he's going to be in the morning. <laughs> but you know something else that I learned, all right? And um, so the Onyx thing is, is fairly new to me. I mean, for, for elk and, you know, big game and stuff like that, you know, you can see, you know, it, it's very useful there to see, all right, well, here's a, you know, here's this draw, and this is, you know, the, the topo, and you can see this is going up high. So if you're looking for water sources, you're looking for food, where is it going to be based off of what you're hunting, right? So there's that part of it. But I found out something else when, when we went out to George Washington. You can go, because it's a national forest, and see when they burn. And George Washington National Forest had burnt the area that we were in a couple of weeks beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um so as a as a really key thing, you can go to the national you know National Park Service in the if you're hunting a national park um, or state local, whatever it might be, and find out if it's on public land, have they burned it? And hmm. springtime and burns go pretty well with turkey hunting. So hmm. um, yeah. I, th I I learned something. I, I, you know I thought that was pretty slick, man. Um, so my take on that was was. Um, every year you learn something. That's what I learned this year. So another place to get good information. Well, you never stop. It. You can never stop learning. That's for sure. That's it. Yeah. I'm I just, said, and I like it too. Just if I'm out walking, you know, even going to, um, 
the places I go in Maryland. I'll open it up even if I'm just out walking in the woods, you know, and hear a bird gobble five, six hundred yards away. I'll pull up my map and look. Okay, well, I know that bird gobbled, you know, this direction and sit there and look at the map and look. Oh, well, there's a field right over there. I can try to sneak around this side of the field and, you know, get a little better lay of the land instead of just running gung ho straight at him, try to strategize it a little bit and figure out where he might be instead of just running straight at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that worked out pretty good, though. You know, so so you go on after your Rio next. Where, where, what state? You don't have to give a specific, but what state were you in when you got your Rio? Mm, I, I went to Scandinavia for the Rio. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna give it to us. Okay. Hey, I'll, I'll yeah, no, you know where I went. I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Scandinavia, man, that's it's that's a great place to go hunting. I would recommend it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I'll start calling you Pal Off Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you can um, add, like like I'll literally see a turkey driving down the road with my wife and I'm like, Don't you freaking tell anybody we saw that and she's like, What is wrong with you? <laughs> Like you lie to children and you think that's okay. I'm like, it is. It's a turkey. <laughs> it's fine. When it comes to turkey. Yeah, it is. So, okay, I, I, I took this long pilgrimage to Scandinavia, right? And I'm like, riding around. Um, there's this place like you can't. I couldn't just camp anywhere there, but there was a park that I could get a camping spot, and I show up there, and you know, it's like. Eight dollars a night for primitive camping it was perfect. So I get my camping spot. You know, I I just camp in my truck. I, I you know found my spot. I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna go see what's going on. And I rode to a pull off, and there was a, some guys coming out. This was at twelve o'clock, I think. And I get there, and you know, wave at them. They didn't wave, of course, whatever. And I get there, and there's like. A mound of turkey English. feathers on the pull off, and I'm like, Ugh, I think I was a day late here, you know. I, I don't know. And there was like boot tracks everywhere, I could tell it'd been pounded. And I was like, Well, I'm gonna go check this other spot out. I look, you know, attend, I'll go to see what's going on there. And I got there, and it was empty, uh, a ton of sign of people, but it was big enough I could get a long ways from there and hopefully get away from pressure. So I walked, I think it was a mile and three quarters maybe, but easy walking. It wasn't bad. And I just so happened to see a gobbler. And I'm like, perfect. Okay. You know, I've been here for an hour and I've already found the one I'm going to hunt. This is what, I mean, how lucky can I get? And he's working down a creek bed right to me. Like I haven't made a call, nothing. And I'm like, well, this isn't exactly how I envisioned it, but I mean, I'm not just going to, what, what do yeah. I do? So I you know, <laughs> crawled to a spot and set up. You never called to him. <laughs> no. Yeah, it broke his fan <laughs> out. The old shoot and scoot. <laughs> no. No. No, 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 no fans were brought out this season. <laughs> Good. I mean, it might have worked on that one. I, I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to find out, you know, that's just not for me. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. So I, uh, I just sat down and he walks and he's pecking right to me. And I'm like, man, this is ridiculous, but I, whatever. And he gets to like 75 yards from me and just turns around and walks away. And I'm like, oh, okay. No. So I, I yelp at him. He damn near, I mean, he all but runs from me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Gobbled. He gobbled. 20 times but just totally left and i was like well i'm sure he's been hunted whatever you know i i wasn't gonna get that lucky anyways so i i kind of kept working down this creek bed and i see a hen come out walks over and i kind of crawl out to this point spot and look and there he is strutting with this hen and i'm like oh okay he's like totally different mood you know his head was head was bright it's like i, I can play ball i think so and real quick, I watched though, him breed I, this hen. Well, hold on, I got a question for you. Yeah. So, staying in generalities, was it wooded or was it kind of, or was it open area? No, it was. Well, it was like a, a creek bed with ag, 
Okay, cool. All right, all right. That, so, that like, yeah, up. the turkey was in a cornfield. Well, you okay. know, cut, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was I'm in a, like the uh, the longest cornfield. I mean, it was huge, a huge <laughs> field. And I'm way down, and I see him breed this in, and I'm probably 300 yards from him. And she kind of eases off from him. And I'm like, well, you know, he's strutting at this point. I'm like, you know, there's like this point in front of me, probably 200 yards I needed to get there. I just felt like to get around that point so, you know, I could hopefully get him to wheel the point. And, you know, he sits there and looks for the hen, doesn't see her, and I shoot him, you know, typical hunt. Well, I ease down to this point. I mean, it's like. It's open. I'm belly crawling, trying to get in position. And I kind of eased up and yelped to him. I was probably 175. Just one yelp. He gobbled probably three times, and I kind of eased my head up, and he's he's looking hard. And I'm like, okay. He's interested. It's like, I got to get to this point. So I, I, I crawl. I'm crawling as fast as I can. And I get to this point, and, like, there's a tree, you know, I want to sit at. I get to this tree, and as I start easing my body up, there he is, wheeling the point, like, 60 yards in front of me. I'm like, oh, shit. It's It's too late. late. Luckily, there was this little bit of grass in front of me. I could still make make my move. And I get get set up, and he just struts, gobbles. I think I maybe made a couple soft clucks. He answered them and just walks the 30 yards in front of me. And just proceeds to strut and spit and drum and gobble for five minutes. And I, I'm i not the kind of person that will just sit there and watch the show. I wish I was, but usually, you know, I just get them to that spot and I pull the trigger and that's it. I like but it was like, show. it was so perfect that I just sat there and took it in. And the funny thing is, across this big cornfield from me, there were two of, there was other hunters that had came in behind me. And they're over there just yelp, 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 just give him hell. These turkeys answer him <laughs> every time, but they have no idea he's right off my gun barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and they started cutting real loud, and he gobbled and stuck his head straight up, and I was like, okay, I'm going to shoot him here. <laughs> and just fold him. It was beautiful hunt. I mean, just incredible. And I look across the field, and there goes these two dudes just walking out. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> it'd, have been, it'd have been funny if it was the same two guys that didn't wave at you. I'd have waved oh, kind of all the way out with my that's, turkey. That's who I hope it was. That's the whole time I was like, I hope it was those guys from Arkansas that didn't wave. <laughs> there you so go. the Rio was, I don't know, 17, 18 hour drive, and it was a four hour hunt, and I was done. That's crazy. So, so that leaves I one more, it, right? Yeah. So I, I ended up, I stayed that night in the campground because I was pretty drained from just the whole drive Hell or whatever. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'll sleep here. And I headed out from there to Russia. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Tough place, it really, you know. It's, it's different. It's a bad time. Cold, it's right. a bad time to be there right now. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't understand anybody. It was odd. You know, yeah, cool. <laughs> so one thing I can say, you know, I always heard Miriams are easy. Miriams are easy. There's nothing uh-huh. to kill in a Miriams. And like, I maybe that's true if you're hunting, you know, a little pr- a private ranch or something that the birds are patterned. But I can tell you, like, them big yeah. mountain public land Miriams, like, that was, those Hard. turkeys will run your ass to death. They will. They <laughs> will. For sure. Um, it's like, like I, I was not expecting that. I mean, I figured, you know, and they gobble, like, at everything and anything, and they don't stop. At least the ones where, I, I mean, it was just gobble 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 and it's like well he's answered me 75 times surely he's going to come this way as he literally nope. is running as hard as he can the opposite, the opposite direction, direction. <laughs> <laughs> so i got up there that day it was raining i just said heck with it you know i set up my i set up where i was going to camp i was like i'm just going to hang out in the truck if it if it lets up i'm going to take a little walk it lit up 
I walked out. I ended up seeing a gobbler that evening. I was like, well, thank God. At least there's one on this place somewhere. <laughs> and, you know, I go, I go out the next morning. I heard a couple of turkeys. I mean, there was a lot. Of, I, you could hear, I could hear so far from where I was. There was a lot of turkeys around and like, Honestly, if they were Easterns, I guess it's because I'm used to hunting Easterns and I know what they'll do. Like, I'd have killed one the first day in no time. <laughs> those, those mirrors, they, I mean, they literally, ra- I felt like a track Don't star sit though, still, man. that first day. They do not sit still. I just, I could not get a turkey to really pay me any attention. It was like I followed them, they gobbled, they just had hens and... I just couldn't get them pulled off, but you know, whatever. I had plenty of time. So the next morning I go out, I guess this is day two. And there was a couple of turkeys gobbling. I went after, they ended up getting on private land. So I had to move back up to one that I'd heard earlier that morning. It was actually two of them. And they also had their running shoes on. And, <laughs> and of course, you know, stars. Yeah, and going up like the steepest crap yep. on the whole freaking mountain face. So I'm like dying, trying to keep up, trying to like keep close to him and tr- trying to hide in like that terrain, like, you know, Ponderosa Pines. Like, it's not easy to hide in. Yeah. So like, you know, I'm crawling through crevices, everything I can to get up and trying to get in front of them, but I never could get in front of them. But I got to like, mm, a hundred yards, maybe 80, 90 yards from them. And it was like, finally, it was just that magic distance where they decided, okay, we're going to go say hello. And, (laughs) you know, I just, it worked out great. And I killed, killed my Miriams that morning. So I made the long drive home. Dude, that's a hell of a damn story. (laughs) That's that's awesome. (laughs) It was, dude, it was awesome. Like I had, I was planning on three days in both places to, you know, kill hopefully three, you know, three, three, and that gave me enough time. And it took, well, t- uh, two days <laughs> plus the driving, of course, but, you yep. know. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Benny is, uh, is, is, uh, got an idea in his head now that I think mm-hmm. is actually a pretty good idea. And uh, we're going to try to support him as best as we can from the hunting quest perspective. Um, but uh, you want to tell him what your idea was? Did we tell people this? No, not yet. I talked to James about it. Okay, I so know. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've talked to him about it. I'm going I'm to call in on him for, for a couple of them. <laughs> well, I, I told Benny if he needs any scan. If he needs a pen drop in russia i could probably help him out i say some some of those russian I pins do, or scandinavia pins spot, might be helpful I think. <laughs> <laughs> or at least it was this year there might not be a damn thing there next year <laughs> we're good this time um, so uh you know given the fact that you were able to complete your slam uh by the way i I'm, i just i think it's awesome that you were able to do it man i just hats off to you um, congratulations, <laughs> man. Tell your wife she's a trooper in the fact that she decided that she's gonna let you go do it. Uh we're we're super excited. I was I was anxiously waiting to see, you know, what was gonna come up and where you're gonna be able to get it. And man, I got that 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 text and I was like, All right, that's that's awesome. That is freaking <laughs> awesome. I said I, I got the happier for you. I got the um, phone call when he was leaving Scandinavia heading to Russia, I was like Dude, just go. I was like, don't think about it. Just go kill him. He's like, oh, yeah, just go. I'm going to try. I'm like, no, don't try. Just go do it, James. He's like, all right. Uh, fair enough. And then two days later, send me a picture of that Miriam. My God, they're pretty. So Whew. what was your favorite one? As far as, well, I guess it's a couple of different questions there. One would be, which one was your favorite hunt out of all of them? Easterns. Easterns, yeah. Um, yeah. Grant, but I, I, Easterns are my, I'll definitely say are still my favorite turkey to hunt, but that country that the Merriams live in is unbelievable. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so, overall, would you have done it again? 
would you go? Would you do it again if you if if you had never done it? Would you go and do it again? Oh yeah, absolutely. Worthwhile. Yeah, I, I already told my wife like you might as well prepare because I might not do the same states every year, but I think a western swing is definitely in the <laughs> books for you, the you next got it in the blood, it man. Blast. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hunting out west is is a totally different ordeal, man, and it is so much fun. So, um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm super pumped for you. I was so. So excited when you said you were gonna do it, and uh, I was nervous for you. I, I was hoping that you'd get it done. I didn't think that you wouldn't. I just uh, I was glad to see that you got it all done and you got it done in one season. So, uh, hats off to you as far as you know being able to 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 call them turkeys, get them in, and do what you needed to do. So, good job, man. That was awesome. Thank you, buddy. That's badass. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so we actually got a couple of emails about you. Oh jeez! <laughs> Were they females what? or males? <laughs> <laughs> they were from Russia. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> with love. Um, um, so we have people that were asking if, if at some point you would look to do um, kind of a call seminar. Um, nothing spectacular, just you know what you would do in this type of situation, what you do in that situation. Um, you know, um, just a, a, a little bit of helping hands from, you know, to, to kind of give people direction on, on, Hey, this is a Yelp. This is uh you know, this is this, this is that. And this is when I use that. Um, because there's a lot of people out there say, you know, they'll teach you how to, how to call, you know, it's, Oh, this is, this is how you do this. This is how you drum. This is how you do this. This is this. Um, but when to call is more important than, than, than how to call. I mean, you get the how to call down pretty quick, but knowing when to call and what to call is is kind of the important part. So um, we did get a couple of questions about that, and I wanted to you know pick your brain, not to put you on the spot or anything, but uh, yeah, just to let yeah, you know there's some folks good. That, there's some folks out there that want to definitely want to figure that out, and they uh, think that would be a pretty big use. And um, so. Um, Hopefully you'll take that under advisement and you'll come out and you'll do a seminar or something like that. It'd be cool. My calling's kind of rough. So, you know, I don't, I'll be like, don't call like me. But <laughs> make this noise. <laughs> yeah. Have you hunted with me yet? You haven't heard my calling. It's horrible. I kill dumb turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, so we want to no, guess sure. I'm, My wife says I'm okay at it, so, you know. I guess I'm okay at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, yeah. So he's yeah. so he's really good. He's just yeah, humble about exactly. it. Exactly. Hum, Perfect. Humble? <laughs> I, I'd definitely be, you know, willing to help. Some, I'm not going to give anybody like the top secret key key cackle cluster, but you know. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, yeah, I, I like. You know, helping helping people out. I don't, I don't ever tell anybody where to go, but I tell no, them how no. I would do it. Well, you know, we we now know that you hunt in Scandinavia and Russia. I say I know so, I'm going to Russia next year. <laughs> I'm definitely going to Russia next year. I've got a pen uh, I can send you. Yeah. <laughs> Those Russian Miriams have the whitest tips of all. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they're frozen. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking ice. Yeah. Some bitches uh -huh. are freezer burnt while they're still walking. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that, that leads me to this. Um, uh, all right, so a couple of things. What you do with the turkeys? Um, you, get them, you get them mounted, or um, what you going to do with them? Um, all the ones this year, I, I did keep the fans. I got a buddy of mine to do. I got, like, one of the four fan things. Yeah. So yep. I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm like all, I'm going to put four of the fans together, you know, the single season grand slam thing, whatever. I think that'd be neat. And yeah. like the beards and spurs, I just, you know, I keep like my shotgun shells and put the beards in them. Yeah. That's uh, cool. The next, next Miriams and stuff I shoot, maybe an exhaust. I'm going to probably get them mounted and put them in our store. We've got, that's cool. But, yeah, but two of the Easterns I shot this year actually are 
at the taxidermist now to go in the store. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's Thank awesome, man. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So now that you're going to figure that out, what are you going to do with the fact that it's not turkey season anymore? Cry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, fair enough. You hunt? You, are you going to fish? Yeah. Yeah, I'll fish some uh, some this summer, but I just, I don't, I used to fish a ton. I mean, I was big into it. I had a boat and everything, and I just kind of, I still like to do it, but it's just, you know, life's gotten busy. Oh, yeah. It's For like, sure. as much time as i take off for turkey season and then like waterfowl it's like when i'm home i pretty much just have to hammer it yeah for the rest of the year but it's well worth it you know oh <laughs> but, yeah yeah mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. gotta make sure that honeybee list is taken care of you know that's yeah the, that's right you know that's I, the important part right yeah that's it she lets me hunt a lot so yeah. i can't say anything there you go <laughs> yeah we're gonna try to get into some uh surf cast fishing this year um, oh, that's fun! I Why guess not? I've never, I've never, I can't. I've tried it, but I've never been real successful with it. So um, we're gonna try to put together a, a guys trip to go down to Assateague or Chicatique or something like that, and go try to see if we can hook into something with uh, surf casting rods. See what well, heck! If nothing there. else, you if nothing else, you cut a spot in half, and you can probably burn up the freaking stingrays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, nah, it's going to be fun, though. I'm, I'm, my wife is a big, big fisher person. Fisherman. Well, she doesn't care, but she, she's a big fisherman. And, uh, I mean, if, if there's a drop of water, she'll throw a freaking rod into it, little rod and reel into it, trying to catch a fish. Um, so, uh, it's going to be hard to do an all guys trip down there, but uh, I think it's going to be possible. But I have to take her to like Nags Head or somewhere like that and go fishing down there. So, well, that's a fair trade. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair trade for one of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a double win for you because you know you get to fish in Chincoteague, Assateague, wherever, and then you get to fish in Nags Head. It's like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I like Nags Head. I'd never been there before till uh, a week or so ago, and um, that place is gorgeous. I, it is you know, nice. Yeah. It gets kind of tight in the summertime, but that's what I heard. Um, they said there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people, a lot of things, and it gets uh, gets a little crazy. But yeah, it can get pretty bad. But like if you go south on the island, or you know, like up north, north of Nags Head or south Nags Head. It's really nice. It's not too yeah. bad. Yeah, I saw a place. I want to go to Hatteras. I want to oh, it's beautiful that. down there. Yeah. I want to see the lighthouse. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it is beautiful. And it's yeah. the nice thing about Hatteras is it's a quick run to the Gulf Stream. So, you know, if you're going, if you book a charter to fish, it's not even a lot of an hour ride and you're fishing. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. Nice. It's nice. Yeah. Um, I say when we, uh, that, when we go to Assateague, um, cause I just went there Saturday this week or last weekend. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a park permit now and everything so we can book out a campsite and go party. Huh? I'm glad one of us knows what the hell's going on. <coughs> I say we went out well, there. Uh, my mom was in town, so we went over. I figured it'd be a good thing to go waste some time on Saturday and look at the wild horses and shit. And, um, so we went over there and <laughs> we got to the state park on Assateague on the Maryland side and uh, we pulled into the parking lot and thankfully a military, so it was all free, but we pull into the parking lot and um, there was like nothing there. And I was like, what the hell? So we went back out of the parking lot, found this other road that went down. There's another guard shack there and that was just for the campsites. <coughs> so since I didn't have a, a camping permit, they were like, no, you can't go down this road. I'm like, what? Okay. I was like, is there a road that I can like go drive through the park? Like, I don't want to get out and hike seven miles down the beach. Like, where can I like drive and just look at stuff? And the guy was like, well, if you take, you know, take this Y and turn left, um, that goes down to the national park. 
but their their parking lot's full and it's twenty five dollars and blah 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 blah. So if you just turn a right at that stop sign and go back into this parking lot, you can get out and there's trails and stuff that you can get out and walk down in there. I'm like, motherfucker, I don't want to walk down in there. <laughs> I don't want to walk seven miles to look car. for horses. I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, so we pull up to the stop sign and I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go left and go down. You know, there's got to be a little bit of road down to the national park. I was like, worst case scenario, I'll just turn around and drive back the other way on this road. I don't care. Well, we're driving down, and all of the horses were on that side before you get to the national park. And so we oh, saw okay. everything that we wanted to see before we even got to the national park. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, that works out fine. And uh, I was like, man, I wonder if the national park has, like, a military discount. Like, surely they do. Well, we get up to it, and uh, I show them my cat card. It's free. So we pull up, and I have a – so they printed out and gave me a hard – uh, like credit card with the national park military stamp good yep. for any national park in the country just sign yep. the back here you go have a good day enjoy the park and i was like huh, hell yeah That's cool. uh, so we went and drove all through the national park too um and i don't know if either of you guys have been over there i'm sure you have you've lived here longer than i have it is beautiful over there it is oh my god it's cool um, of course, I'm walking around like, man, I wonder if I can duck hunt this. Can I, <laughs> can I bring a kayak over here and duck hunt this? Because I really want to. My mom's so like, oh, wow, look at this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that marsh over there that I could. There's mallards sitting over there in the grass that are breeding. You know, I could, I could duck hunt right here. <laughs> That's the first place that I ever took Allie duck hunting. Oh, really? Yep. And she shot a buffalo head. That was her first duck. Oh, ever. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Think, I'm gonna be I'm, stealing one of Travis's boats and going over there at some point this year. <laughs> I think the buffalo head is like the Chincoteague National Duck. Mm-hmm. Because I ain't yeah. never in my life seen buffalo heads anywhere on this earth like I have at Chincoteague. Yeah, really? Oh yeah. Oh, it, dude, we need to oh, plan dude, a. We need to plan you, a trip and go shoot like a four man of buffalo heads. Barrels off a shotgun. You can. Oh, shooting we bubbles. need to do that. That'd be oh, a good yeah. time. Shooting bubbles, yeah. man. It's crazy. It oh, man. Nuts. I'd love to go shoot like a four or five man limit of buffies. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be a blast. Ten minutes. Yeah. God, that'd be fun. We got I tired of shooting wife. at her, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I took my wife to Chinka Tig back a couple years ago for Christmas. And, like, we set up, you know, set at this spot, and, like, 300 mergansers come in. And I'm like, all oh, right. Oh, hell yeah. Just get your gun up and, like, shoot them on the water. She's like, okay, okay. <laughs> she, gets her gun, she gets her gun up, and they flush. I'm like, shoot, shoot, shoot. Pow. She, <laughs> she killed two of them out of the, on her first shot. Oh, I was like, hell yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, good job, honey. I don't yep. think she touched another bird after that. <laughs> <laughs> But she got two two hooded mergansers in one shot. <laughs> Dude, that's Kentucky doubles, man. That's pretty good. Uh, I like that. I like that's that a, a that's the problem with becoming that was my a proudest moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I said that's the <sighs> that's the problem with starting guiding is now that's all I want to shoot is mergansers and buffleheads because that's the shit everyone doesn't want to shoot or everyone misses buffleheads flying up the river. Or they see, you know, lawn darts flying in. They're like, oh, I ain't shooting Merganzer. Like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Watch this I shit. What, man, when those little <laughs> missiles go by, I, I look at that as, I mean, I shot a lot of ducks in my life. But when those missiles just come by, and, and you can take one down <laughs> in, in full flight, <laughs> to me, that's a damn accomplishment right there. Oh, so. it's fun. Oh, that's there's one of our better uh, than a big old fat red breasted Mergans. Oh, dude, the red breasted mattress thrashers. <laughs> <laughs> Love shooting those guys. We have uh one of our landowners down there. He hates them. He like will not. He's like, dude, I don't want to shoot them. Like, I don't want to be stuck with it. And so anytime I take him out, I'll see him coming and won't say anything about it. And I'll wait until they're like 30 yards in front of us. And I'll be like, on the right, kill him, kill him, kill him. And he jumps up, and boom, 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 boom. Fucking McGansers. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a we had shot a couple uh this season and we sent the dog out on them. <laughs> the dog walked across, you know, swam across the channel, gets over to it, sniffed it, turned around and walked back to the blind. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's like, you know, 
And I was like, <laughs> fair enough. So we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend. Y'all got any good plans? Mm, I ain't doing nothing. Not, not me. I think I'm just going to work and wish I was turkey hunting. There you go. But my wife cut me off, so. There you go. That's it. And when she yeah. kills you in your sleep, I will I will not say a word. I think she said she actually might kill me if I if I hunted anymore. Yeah. So you I might mean, be you might be right on the money. There. You might be on something. How, how many days straight did you get to hunt? Forty. Okay. All right. Yeah. So people look at me and they say, you know, like I, I get to go out west and I hunt and I I'm out there for, you know, sixty, eighty days or whatever, you know. And uh I get it. You know, my wife is amazing. She gives me the opportunity to go out and hunt and do whatever, and she handles everything at the house. And, but there's there's consequences to our actions. So uh, uh, as long as you keep that in mind, that's not a bad deal. So Oh, no. I'll, hey, I'll be the first to tell anybody I have got the greatest wife in the entire world, and I am so blessed and lucky because I have no idea what she sees in me and why she puts up <laughs> with But she's amazing. Right? Is she sitting so in the room with you right now, James? Yeah, I just looked around the corner and there's a shotgun barrel. So I was like, <laughs> Say, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something that's kind of cool. Um, so uh, my cousin reached out to me, and um, she lives down in Pensacola, Florida, right? And um, I think it's really cool what she does is, so her kids, kids, she has two, um, and um, her kids are coming up uh, to their senior year, and she decides, hey, you know, I don't want to do anything for you when you graduate. I want to do something when you become a senior. So as they, as they graduate from, you know, 11th grade to 12th grade, she takes them out for their senior trip. They get to pick what they want to do. And so, uh, good Lord, that was loud. Um, so, uh, what I thought was really, really cool was she decided, or her, her, um, son said, I want to go fishing. And I mean, for a kid to decide all, you know, he can do pretty much anything he wants to do. He wants to go fishing. And so she called me up. She goes, hey, Mike, uh, my son wants to go fishing. Guess what we're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so he's flying up here. They're both flying up. Um, my cousin Nikki is coming up, and, and he's coming up. And um, on, the, on the 7th of June, so a couple of weeks from now, and uh, we're going to go fishing. But we're going to have him on the podcast, too. So um, you got to meet this kid. I'm just, uh, you know, I, I met him when he was little, little, but I've never, I haven't met him, you know, now that he's, you know, grown, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what this kid, I mean, there's hope for the future. <laughs> there's absolutely <laughs> hope for the future. This kid wants to go fishing. So uh, um, Travis said that he was going to, you know, he's going to take us out boat fishing and we're going to go down to Shenandoah. Um, I love fishing the Shenandoah. If, if it just would run south, you know, not south to north, if it would run north <laughs> to south, I'd be a little bit better with it. But, man, there's some amazing fishing there. So There it is. Yeah. That's number two smallmouth in the country. Yeah. That, I that's no a good river. Yeah, it is. And it's gorgeous. It's it absolutely is. gorgeous. It is beautiful. beautiful country down there. Yeah. Um, and you live in that area. I mean, you live in the valley. So, I mean, that's uh, – you got – pretty close to access to it anytime you want don't you yeah yeah it's not too far not too far for me it's uh beautiful i haven't been up there in forever but yeah. I, I used to fit take the kayak you know kayak up there and fish a good bit yeah that's what we're gonna wind up doing <clears throat> we're gonna yeah the kayak exactly. fish and come down yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've got I've got my wife's work phone propping up my phone so you could see me and it keeps <laughs> dinging, but I think I got it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words, ding! Yeah. <clears throat> nah, so uh, I'm kind of excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to 
Oh, yeah, man. That would be a blast. Do some cool stuff. But uh, I think he'd like meeting y'all. So uh, we'll see if we can uh, at least get him in touch with y'all and have a good time. Well, Benny, you'll be you'll be fishing. So. I'll be here. Yeah, that'd be fun. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. So you're going to try to get a little bit of fishing in. Then you're going to do prep work for ducks, right? Yeah. Yeah, duck season will be coming up. and Here before you know it. We hit all that, and maybe if I have time, I'll make a trip out west to deer hunt, hopefully. Yeah. And then I guess just, you know, some more duck hunting and then waiting on March. Now, you're guiding this year too, right? You all, you yep. always guide for ducks, right? With wildlife. Yep, yep. I'll be doing some guiding. Cool. How long are you going to be um, up there? I don't know. You're going we'll to be up there in October? <laughs> <laughs> you better be up there the first two weeks of October, or I'm gonna be pissed. Okay. I got I got moved back, so I'll be up there the first two weeks of October. Okay, I'm yeah, cool. I'm kind, I'm kind of like a tumbleweed, you know. It's just like <laughs> I, I might go this, you know. I I don't know what I'm doing. It's just kind of whenever I whenever I go, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a client with uh, Wild Valley this year. So that's going to be fun. Okay, I'm so excited cool. when for are it. You, when are you going up? Whenever Doyle, look, whenever Doyle tells me I'm going up. Perfect. <laughs> he told me, I think, um, uh, last uh, last week of October, uh, first week of November? No, I can't remember. Um, Doyle knows. Yeah, so, it'll probably maybe be last week of October. I think so. Um, I told him I wanted to go after the, uh, I wanted to go hit some, the ribeyes of the sky. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So That's I what I want. I want some of those, of those cranes. Yeah. Those things look crazy. Those videos of guys shooting them, they look insane doing it. Yeah. It looks awesome. I want to get a full mount of one of those cranes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a wicked mount. That'd be sweet. There's a, I, so I ran into a guy and I've got his cards and all that stuff. I meant to get him on here. Um, him and his, uh, I think his wife or girlfriend, I can't remember. Uh, we met him at NWTF, and that's his thing. We did an interview with him, and I don't know where the damn interview is. I'm, I'm going to blame Benny for not getting it out there. But I never got the NWTF footage, so that's your fault. You've <laughs> got it. A, a, You've got it somewhere. It's on a, a G-Drive. promise you. No. Yeah. Anyway. No, it's gone. So uh, they were really cool <laughs> folks, and he had some full-body mounts of sandhill cranes, and they look gorgeous. And he says... If I could only do those, I'd be a happy man. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, and they even look awesome. I mean, they really, really look awesome. Yeah, they're cool. I mean, they're huge. They are. Yeah, they're yeah, like massive. they don't weigh that much, but I mean, they stand. Jeez, Louise, they're tall. They're mean oh, yeah. too. They are it's mean like, as hell. It's like a duck hunt mixed with a African safari. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's like you shoot him on the wing, it's you know like yeah cool, and then it turns into like a freaking Cape Buffalo hunt when he charges you. you know? <laughs> That's what Travis was you know telling me stories of you know they'll poke dogs' eyes out and um, oh yeah you man. know they'll fuck a dog up. They'll, yeah, they you know, got, really they injure him if you don't have a dog that'll you know really like run through and freight train it, and they back up from it, they'll start poking them and yeah they'll really injure a dog. I'm like no way whoa yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys won't even send it. And they like they make those goggles for dogs yeah. just yeah, the you know, goggles so they wear them crane hunting so they don't get their eyes pecked out. No way. You know, I don't know why I've never never heard of that. Oh man, they're evil That's animals. crazy. They're evil animals. I'm a crane hater. I'm just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> like I was talking to like I always I never really minded him until I talked to this dude one day. It was in it was in Saskatchewan. This dude had a ton of cranes. Like it was, you know, it's I don't know three. F trying to think, it was a half section wheat field, and he had a driveway right in the middle of it with a couple of trees and his little homestead. And there were cranes in his driveway around. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just cranes everywhere. A stupid amount of cranes. And I pull up to this guy's house, and I'm like, "Hey, buddy." He's like, hey, and I'm like, do you mind if we hunt those cranes? And he and he just looked at me, and he said, 
I'm so tired of those fucking things staring at me every time I come outside. <laughs> he said, kill every single one of them. And ever since that day, I was like, you know, every time I see a crane, that it's staring at me. Like, I, I hate them too. I, I get where he's coming from. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, ever since that day, I'm officially a crane hater. All right. Fair enough. I yeah. think they taste great. So, uh, they do taste good. Yeah, they're very good to eat. But. Yeah. They're my favorite of all the all the waterfowl out there. They are my favorite to eat. Um, yeah. I like a goose. I like a, you know, Canada goose when they're in the Midwest, you know, or, you know, they haven't, they haven't really done a full migration lately then. You know, cornfields they hadn't hit the golf courses yet, and uh, <laughs> man, they taste delicious too. But uh, those, those sandhill cranes are just amazing, and it doesn't matter where they're at, they're amazing. So, yeah, they're good, tender too. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, Benny, I think we're coming up on our time, aren't we? Yeah, we're about four minutes, but we wrap things oh, up. All right. I was, I was off today. You're early today. Ooh, that's it. We're taking really your name out of the intro and putting my name in. You're out of here. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I'll, give you the, I'll give you the info for the guy who does it and, uh, and uh, get it all fixed up and call it good. All right, that's fine. I call still got Benny Show. I got your credit card, so we're good. I can yeah, do that. there you go. <laughs> I, I like that it doesn't say Bennett just because every, every week it's like, my name's not on it again. Like, it just... It's great. <laughs> That's what we were talking <laughs> last week. Uh, I think if we get it get it redone, we're gonna have the guy say and not Bennett, but and have the Bennett. guy doing the intro say it. You know, this is your host, <laughs> Mikey, perfect. and not Bennett. I was like, and dude, it, <laughs> it's perfect. It's meant That'd to be, be at this point. It's it's like the running joke of the of the series. I tell you, man, we could if things could just slow down a little bit. I I, I think I could get it fixed, but good lord. I mean, life is just too busy right now. Always something. Breaking your knee, not yeah. ordering enough decking board. Yeah. All kinds of <laughs> all kinds of issues with you in your old age, Mikey. I'm telling you, man. You know, it just sucks. <laughs> but uh That's just how it goes. It is, you know. Um but you know, I did I me and Travis managed to get that's so I, I I jacked up my knee and uh I asked uh, Benny to come down and he said no. And so then that's, I went yep, to Travis. That's exactly what I, I said. And I, I went to Travis, and Travis is like, absolutely, my brother, when do you need me? I'll be there tonight. And uh, <laughs> and he's like, Benny will just set you up for failure all the time. So, that's what um, I do, yeah. <laughs> um, but with Travis, we got – I mean, we, we could have finished the deck up. The problem was, was I was like nine boards short. <laughs> mm. And there's 16-foot boards. So it's yeah. like you can't just run out and go get some more, you know. So uh, it was a pain, but uh, we're almost there, you know. We uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'll get it finished up tomorrow, I think. So well, good deal. It's good deal. It's, you still got a little time. You can head uh, north and turkey hunt a little bit. No, nah, I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. I was in New Jersey yesterday, so. Uh, well, if you go up there, you can send me pictures and let me know so I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> Lord knows I got I, I got to live through you and Instagram on your turkey, so I'm good with that. I can do that. Uh, that's all good. Benny, you got anything else, my friend? That's about all I got. What about you, James? You gonna go fishing with us? You gonna go surf cast fishing with us? Um, maybe yeah. if I can make that work, I'll I'll be down. All right, give us some dates. We'll get it squared away. Oh geez, I when it comes you to do dates, it now. I, I'm not good with dates, but I, I, <laughs> we'll reach out to the wife of the turkey. Hunter. Yeah, we'll we'll coordinate it through her. Yeah. Look, Can we steal James, James for the weekend? Like, These guys are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the point. Put a whole bunch of us on a beach together trying to catch Love fish. You, honey. What could go wrong? <laughs> I can't imagine what happens when you put all of us on the beach together. That ought to be interesting. Not a single thing could happen. Well, the best thing about surf fish is the beer drinking, so. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think the worst thing I think I've seen with people who surf cast are the idiots that drive the trucks out onto the beach, and then the surf, they forget that they're at low tide when they start fishing, mm. and high tide comes in, and they lose a truck. 
So. See, that'd be me after my first 12 pack. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like reeling in a minnow, and I'd be like, oh, the truck's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> we still got the fun. cooler. We got the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you right got anything else this. for us, Mr. James? Um, that, good luck to everybody else. It's still chasing turkeys and remember with turkey hunting it's not about the kill it's about the experience there you go i like that absolutely <laughs> well thanks again for sharing some time with us today uh we really appreciate you being here uh super excited that you got your slam done in one season um and that's just that's a hell of an accomplishment so uh, uh thanks again my friend and uh hopefully we'll see you surf cash fishing here shortly uh, all right benny take us home my friend all right. See y'all next week. Thanks, James. Yeah. Thank you. You've been listening to The Hunting Quest. No matter how crazy, high tech, or lazy the rest of the country gets, we will always be hunting and fishing. If that's you, you've found your new family. Thanks for listening to the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. Reach out to us by email at info at thehuntingquest.com and check us out on Instagram and YouTube at The Hunting Quest. See you next time.